Hello, my name is Kevin Sims, and I am a marketing engineer in the CDS group at Train. In this video, I'm going to be discussing some of the best things you can do to help create and analyze your model in Trace 700. We will go through 10 tips that the experts in the CDS group have decided are some of the most important for your Trace 700 model. There are many techniques to make you a better building load and energy modeler with the Trace 700 program. Some of the tips in this video may seem simple, but we have many customers that do not take advantage of even the most basic features in Trace. By only doing a few of these things in this video, it may help you be more efficient at inputting values, better at analyzing and troubleshooting results, and in general, more confident in the application of Trace 700. For the first tip, let's talk about when it makes sense to simplify a load design model for energy analysis. There are several questions that need to be addressed in order to maximize modeling efficiency in this conversion process. First and foremost, you need to ask yourself, what is the desired level of detail to meet the project objectives? How many alternatives will I need to run? What are the chances that this model will be used for more detailed analysis in the future? How much project time has been budgeted for analysis and model refinement? All of these questions impact the level of granularity allowed for the model. And because the answers to these questions may vary significantly with each project, you will find that a little effort at the beginning of each project can help ensure the appropriate level of detail in the model. Typically, load design requires a detailed room level model to verify proper equipment sizes and ensure ventilation requirements are met. However, energy models can generally be less granular, especially when they are being used for comparative purposes. For most users, the load to energy analysis adjustment will come in the form of building footprint redistribution, or zoning. For higher level energy analysis, you may want to combine the zones based on directional facing. When higher fidelity is necessary, zoning based on directional orientation may not be sufficient. In this case, the combination of spaces that are the same usage type, meaning no major parameter differences, such as thermostat set points, internal or external exposures, or continuous versus non-continuous ventilation rates, will help reduce the complexity of the model without a significant loss in accuracy. Now, some people may say that this is good for some energy modelers, but I'm doing a lead model, and I need to be as precise as possible. Although I would agree the model needs to be precise, ASHRAE 90.1 encourages you to create thermal blocks in order to create a more simplified model. To continue, when zoning a model for energy analysis, you must also include already designed HVAC systems. Make sure to take into account the as-designed zoning model, as this will dictate which rooms can be zoned together. Finally, the benefit of simplifying the model commonly manifests by limiting the opportunity for mistakes, reducing the potential for unmet hours, and significantly reducing calculation time. For tip number two, use of templates may seem like a simple idea, but it is one of the things the CDS Support Center most often sees improperly used in Trace. Technically, you do not need to use the template section to run and create a model. As people who do a lot of modeling understand, using the template section is probably the single best thing you can do to speed up the modeling process. The trick is to know how many to create without going overboard. As a general rule of thumb, you want to make enough templates to describe the different zones and rooms in your building. For instance, the internal loads tab normally contains the most templates. This is because this is where the most diversity resides. However, the construction tab may only have one or two templates because typical buildings use the same construction materials throughout allowing the same template to be applied multiple times to different room types. Finally, you need to take advantage of the Rooms tab. This is where you combine the internal loads, airflows, thermostat, and construction templates into one master template for each room type. Once these master templates have been created, you can fill in the majority of a room's inputs with a single click. For tip three, we'll talk about proper zoning. Proper zoning is incredibly important as it can affect outputted supply air dry bulb temperatures and CFM rates. For proper zoning, you'll need to know what type of air site system you have. This will help you zone the rooms properly the first time and potentially save a lot of time and hassle for interpreting outputs later. I'm not going to cover this topic in detail in this presentation because we already have a presentation completely devoted to the subject. For tip number four, we're going to talk about calculation tips. Before doing a detailed analysis, it is recommended that you run your model in reduced year mode. Running a model in full year mode will increase the calculation time by up to five times the typical runtime. 
running in reduced year mode will allow you to flush out any large issues with as little runtime as possible. Once you refine your model, run in full year mode to satisfy lead and any other bodies that will require you to run an energy model with a full year profile. Hopefully, you will not have to run the full year profile more than a few times to completely polish off your model. Next, use the Scan for Errors button. This will provide a good high level check for the most basic data entry mistakes. It can tell you if you have forgotten to input static pressure on a fan, or if you have applied ASHRAE standard 62.1 at the room level, but have forgotten to turn it on at the system level. The best part, though, is that it happens before you calculate, and only takes a few seconds. Tip number five. Validating your model is key when analyzing the outputs. The best method is to validate the load values from the design phase and methodically work to the economic section. In the design phase, the first outputs to analyze are the heating and cooling loads, as well as the cooling and heating coil sizes. The checksums report and system component selection reports are good places to view external and internal loading and sizes for HVAC equipment. These outputs will show whether or not the equipment is sized appropriately to condition the building. After the loads are validated, move on to the energy portion of the program. The analysis reports, and in particular the equipment energy consumption report, is great for viewing energy consumption values of all the components in the building, such as lights, miscellaneous loads, fans, and cooling equipment. This report even gives the capacities and full load rates for equipment, which can show if the output seen reflect incorrectly inputted efficiencies or unloading curves for the equipment. Lastly, if you need more information than what the standard trace reports produce, the Visualizer tool is available. This allows you to view all sorts of items in graphical or tabular format, and can be paired or compared in many different ways. This is a very powerful tool, and if you wish to learn more about it, you can view the CDS eLearning video that discusses it, or you can search for it on YouTube as Trace 700 Visualizer. For tip number six, we're going to talk about viewing reports. The report viewing buttons and checksum select are fantastic when trying to compare alternatives or troubleshoot issues. The reason these are so helpful is mobility. The group tree button brings up a tree on the left hand side of the page that will allow you to click on whatever page you want, allowing you to select whichever report you want without having to scroll through all the reports. The toolbar also increases mobility but more importantly, allows you to lock in which alternatives reports you wish to view. The feature really shines when you add the comparison button. By hitting the comparison button, you add another window to the screen. If you have the toolbars still active, you can now view the alternative one reports in one window and alternative two reports in the other, allowing for incredibly easy comparisons of the alternatives. Additionally, the checksum select is handy because it allows you to select only the room, zone, or system reports you actually want to see. If you only have a few rooms out of 100 that require deeper investigation, you can make Trace only show those particular rooms in the preview window. For tip number seven, we will talk about unmet load hours. One of the biggest things to know about unmet load hours is where to look for clues that will help you resolve them. The Building Temperature Profile Report is generally a great place to start. This report will show you how many unmet heating hours and unmet cooling hours are in each room. It will also tell you when those unmet load hours occur during the day, as well as what day type. This is important because it leads you to different conclusions for the cause of the unmet load hours. For instance, if all your unmet load hours are happening at 8 a.m., then maybe you need to include morning warm-up as a control strategy. Next, if you find a room that is giving you plenty of unmet hours, look at the room checksums report. Here, you're going to look at two different outputs. The first output is the supply air dry bulb. The second output is the main fan airflow. The reason we want to look at these two parameters is because if you have a room that has quite a bit of unmet hours, it is normally because there is a low cooling or low heating coil capacity for the space and or system. The reason for this low capacity could be that the space load during design, which is what the checksums show, is very minimal. With a small load, either the supply air dry bulb will result in a very small delta T, or 
your main fan CFM will be very low compared to a typical diffuser CFM. A good example of this would be storage rooms or closets. This is why we suggest tip number one, which can reduce the amount of unmet load hours by combining smaller areas into thermal zones. To continue on, in CDS, we have seen some room outputs with a heating supply air dry bulb matching the specified room set point because of low heating loads. So, if the set point is 72 and the room is allowed to drift to 65, then with a supply air dry bulb of 72, it will be impossible for the room to be brought back under control. Similarly, if the room is a restroom or a corridor, the outputs could read an airflow rate as small as 15 CFM for the entire space, or smaller. And as before, if the room goes into drift, then there is no way the room could ever be brought back under control with such a low airflow rate. If either of these situations occur, you have a few options to mitigate it. The first option is fixing the supply air dry bulb temperature. This can easily be taken care of by inputting a design supply value on the Create System section, Temp Humidity tab, Design section, Supply field. The second option is to adjust the CFM. The best method is to input an increased CFM rate in the rooms on the Create Room section, Airflows tab, Main Supply section. This will force the design airflow rate to the specified value and provide more airflow to cover the load in the space. There can be many reasons for unmet load hours, but we hope that with a sound starting point and some basic places to look, it will increase your understanding of the software and your ability to troubleshoot your problems in a fast and efficient manner. In tip number eight, when you have unconditioned spaces, it is always better to attach all unconditioned rooms to their own system so they do not interfere with the system's psychometric calculations. For the unconditioned rooms system, it does not matter what type of system you choose, as that system will then become unconditioned as long as all rooms are unconditioned on that system. For tip number nine, the best thing to know about the component tree view is how to copy and paste. This is because the spreadsheet view acts differently than a typical spreadsheet program. As an example, let's say we want to change 25 rooms lighting load from 1.3 to one watt per square foot. You would highlight all 25 fields and press Control C to copy them. Then you would open Excel and press Control V to paste them in. You then change the values how you wish, and in this case, we want to change them all to one. You will then highlight all 25 again and press Control C to copy and return to trace. You need to highlight the 25 cells you wish to overwrite. Then you can press Control V to paste them back in in trace 700. Sometimes the fields are still highlighted from the last time you were in trace. Basically, this component tree view is just another way to view and input data. It is a great place to look for mistakes since all the room's inputs are side by side and can easily be scanned for simple input errors. For tip number 10, Trace normally displays inputs in the order they were created. Most people seem to be more comfortable with drop downs providing information in alphanumeric order. To change this, you will need to travel to the Options, Sort Lists, Alphanumeric selection. Additionally, when you are importing library members, or if you are creating library members, remember that you need to let Trace refresh before you can select the library members. For instance, if you are in the Internal Loads tab and decide to make a people schedule, after you create it in the library, you will need to refresh the Internal Loads tab. You can do this by clicking off the current tab, onto another, and then coming back to the Internal Loads tab. Then, your library member will be selectable in the dropdown. Do not click the Actions Refresh Library Values. This is something very different and will convert overwritten values in the project to library values. It is not reversible, so be careful if you decide to use it. This video has covered a lot of tips, and we hope that you will use all of them to speed up your energy model creation and analysis. We also hope that these tips will help you feel more confident about energy modeling in Trace. If you want more information on these topics, check out the Trace User's Manual or the online F1 Help. 
or contact us at the CDS Help Center with the phone number or email address above. We have already created other videos to help with different aspects of Trace, and we will continue to make videos to help our users become more proficient with the software. So, if there are any other sections you wish to learn more about, let us know, and have a nice day.